I think that living collectively in New York City is it has its difficulties. People move there so they can be frenetic and so they can run around and so they can go to different events and meet different people. Um, and when, when you start looking at the dichotomy between the rural areas and urban areas, like rural areas tend to be kind of like more self-contained and self-sufficient and urban areas are just kind of like all over the place, um, bedroom communities where people sleep but then work in other areas and like um, having to pull resources like food and energy and water from, from various locations further away. Um, and I, I think that an intentional community in an in urban metropolitan area would necessarily have to work through some of these issues. Um, I think that a lot of people in cities right now actually don't need to be everywhere. Um, they would like to have community. And I, and I think that this would solve problems that these people are having. Um, while I don't see it being like a kind of insular thing, um, one collective house that is having an intention behind living together and sharing an income and having an egalitarian structure um, can participate with other places that are doing that, whether that be cultural centers or uh, places of business or, or worker cooperatives um, or other living situations. So working through the differences between that rural and, and urban divide is going to be really important in the city. Um, I don't know exactly what the physical structures will look like. Uh, and I, I don't know that that's really an important thing for an income sharing community, whether it be in rural or urban situations. It could be a tall building, it could be a, a series of small buildings. Um, it could be futuristic high design. It could be retro primitive design and construction techniques. Um, the actual structure itself is not necessarily beside the point, but it's not what actually makes the community. Um, some people will be drawn to different aesthetics and different levels of cleanliness and this and that. Um, uh, but the structure should have systems, like ready-made systems. Um, like anything, the floor plan should make sense, but not for individual individual habitation, for cohabitation with a larger number of people. Um, so there's certain things that you have to look for: larger kitchens, uh, more spread out bathrooms, um, places where people can relax in larger groups, uh, like true living areas, living rooms. Um, and then, you know, the little things like whether people wash clothes on site or if they have to go down the street to the laundromat, um, you know, the distance of uh, grocery stores becomes less important because not every single person has to go to it every other day. You can start going individually and what we do with flux vectors have a delivery and it's easy enough to have a delivery of a large amount of food when we order bulk. So proximity to grocery stores becomes less important, which is um, kind of a, a pretty big like um, rent to uh, income ratios. Like rents are higher in places where you can access basic services like laundromats and grocery stores. If you're in the middle of some crazy part of town that doesn't have any of those, then rents are generally lower because, and and with that, crime rates are sometimes higher because there's less eyes on the street and there's just more crazy activity happening. But these are some of the issues that we have to look at. Um, I'm really interested in connecting those working situations with the living situations and having cross pollination between the living situations. If you choose that, you know you want to switch jobs and live closer to it, then you have the option to move uh, kind of 
to another another neighborhood, but still be within this network of collective houses and intentional community. So it's one big intentional community, even though right now we're just trying to start that one foothold in the city where it can kind of have a jump off point.